Hello and welcome to our Monday afternoon broadcast. Thank you so much if you're catching this on the rebroadcast or you are joining us live. I always appreciate you either way. Um, today we are going to be talking about some new breast cancer research that I just heard about while I was watching the news this morning. And we're also going to be talking about a new or I guess a renewed superfood that is um, being talked about which is actually cockroach milk. So I'm going to share a little bit about that with you and hopefully we'll have a discussion about some of these trends in nutrition and whether it's worth jumping into or not. So if you are new, welcome. My name is Diane and we discuss practices that involve intermittent fasting and living a keto-like lifestyle and general, general overall women's health and wellness issues here on Facebook and YouTube when we go live. Um, I have been in the health and fitness industry for the past 25 years, helping women find nutritional plans and fitness programs to help them look and feel their best and most importantly, live their most authentic life. And that is really what we focus on here in this community. Um, if you are jumping on with us live or catching the rebroadcast, I always ask and encourage you to use that comment section. Please drop me a message letting me know that you were here. And if you have anything that you would like to contribute to this conversation, always feel free to do so. At the end of my discussion, I always open up the floor for comments and questions. And if you're catching this on the rebroadcast, I always go back and look for new comments coming on as well. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about um, some information that I saw on actually it was Good Morning America this morning. So if you want to go into this a little bit deeper, definitely feel free to look this topic up. I think I, it's on their YouTube channel already, or you can look on their website as well. It's some new breast cancer information that I absolutely found fascinating. Um, I am not going to pretend to be an expert on breast cancer or or um, breast cancer uh, research or breast cancer treatment at all. I always just want to make sure that I am providing um, information for you guys that I know about or hear about so you can do further research for yourself. I have not, um, um, I am not a breast cancer survivor. I am not a uh, woman who has been affected by breast cancer. I have known several, several women who have in all different stages of breast cancer. Um, so I am familiar um, with breast cancer from that standpoint. Um, but I wanted to give this information to you guys because I think it's absolutely fascinating and I'm hoping it will lead us into a conversation of some things that we can do based on this new uh, research that is being done. So I'm gonna go off my notes to make sure that I stay on track and stay on point with accurate information that I'm providing for you guys. So please bear with me as I uh, look down at my notes while I'm talking about uh, this new breast cancer research. Now you can find the actual studies on um, the New England Journal of Medicine website, that's where they've published these new findings. So if you wanna, if you're a research paper kind of reader, that would be that definitely the place that you wanna go. And I'm just gonna highlight some of the things that they talked about um, during the discussion on Good Morning America this morning and the things that I was just fascinated with and how I think we can use this type of information, whether we're currently struggling with something like breast cancer or what I like to say is make us game ready. I always want to be game ready in case something um, goes out of my control and I am someday diagnosed with something that I wasn't planning. I always like to have research on my side and information in my hip pocket and a, sort of a, a plan uh, of attack in case um, I'm faced with making some tough decisions like what to do if you're diagnosed with cancer. So like I said, this full study is um, based off a New England Journal of Medicine study that was done so definitely feel free to research it there and you can read the full study um what they were talking about was this new trial that they did where they actually um took breast cancer tumors and tested them so they were testing the the like the variants of possible reoccurrence of breast cancer and there's actually a test that you can take and it's called the i think it's called the onco type test where you can see where you can see how your um, your uh, like genetic makeup or markers or what it is that you're going through with your breast cancer, where it lands within a score of zero to 100. And based on your score, that's really how they determine what the treatment 
plan would be for you and whether the risk of chemotherapy is more than the threat of the cancer. So I'm gonna break down those three categories of scoring between zero to 100 and kind of explain what that means. Um, and again, if you have any any experience with this or if I am saying something that maybe isn't as uh, accurate as it should be, definitely feel free to speak up and I will read your comments when we go to the end. So there's two uh, women that would be um, a candidates for this type of testing and that would be um, someone who has breast cancer that is classified as early stage hormone receptor positive or a cancer that has not yet spread to your lymph node. So it's just in a it's in a first location or stage one type of cancer, I think is how it's described, and it hasn't yet spread. So just breast cancer. Um, what they do is they do a test on the tumor and there's a score of zero to 100. Um, and they're basically testing for the um, possibility of recurrence of tumors post-treatment. So, um, if you have a low score, then they're saying that you don't need chemotherapy or chemotherapy would be the side effects of it are higher risk than um, the actual tumor itself. And then if you have a high score, that chemotherapy is definitely the treatment method to go because the cancer is at higher risk than the actual side effects of chemotherapy. So it's called the Onco type score. So they're saying that um, scores between 11 and 25 are what they consider moderate rating. And this is where majority of women fall into that like 11 to 25 range. Um, but I'm gonna break down the different ranges. So lower than an 18 on a score of zero to 100 on this Onco type score means that you're low risk of recurrence. So low risk of a tumor coming back, um, that the chemo benefits for that rating would be low and the chemo side effects would be high. So the risk of the cancer is lower than the side effects would be of, of the chemotherapy treatment. So chemo would actually be more hazardous to you than the actual tumor that you have. Um, and that's exactly what this type does. It just helps you differentiate between the risk and benef benefits of chemotherapy based on your recurrence rating. So a rating of 18 to 30 means that you're at that intermediate risk. And this is the majority of women kind of where they fall. Um, so you have a moderate chance of recurrence and the risk to benefit is kind of uncertain. So they're not really sure whether the chemotherapy would be advantageous um, because that, that area is kind of the gray area with, with breast cancer. And then anything greater than 30, you would have be kind of in that category of a high level of reoccurrence, meaning that the possibility of the tumor coming back or maybe spreading to another area of your body. Um, the benefits of chemotherapy would definitely be in your favor in that situation. Um, so the risk of chemotherapy would not be higher than um, the benefits. Um, and so chemotherapy would definitely be a treatment option for you. So where does this information really help or benefit us as women? And I love these types of studies and I love these types of categorizing of things like cancer because I really do think that it gives us an option to be in the power seat. And it really does allow us an opportunity to practice what we preach here or practice what it is that we have in our hip pocket for game day or to be game ready. And so I feel like I would be the type of woman in this situation where I would really use nutrition on my side and use things like the books that I've been reading or the documentaries that I've been seeing. And I'll reference the magic pill because that's you know the latest one that's out there and really use the opportunity of living a intermittent fasting and a keto-like lifestyle as my means for fighting that low to moderate range of numbers. So that zero to 25 even for myself, I think I would experiment with some definite fasting and some keto-like living, or maybe go completely ketogenic at that point, knowing what I know about things that I've read and research that I've done and things that I've watched that a really high fat diet is a really great way to starve out cancer that's in your body. And I would 
really ask for an opportunity to to put myself in that position before any kind of treatment was started and i know breast cancer and doctor's advice is always that thing that's super personal and it should definitely remain that way and like i said i am not a breast cancer uh i am not personally affected by breast cancer um and I have, I'm not a survivor of breast cancer. So I am just going off the what ifs in my life. And I know that I always want to be what I call game ready, eliminating all of those things that are high risks for breast cancer, like soy. And then knowing that being in a situation of practicing intermittent fasting and living a keto like lifestyle and putting nutrients in my body that would make me most advantageous for keeping cancer away and or starving it off. So do your research. Always make sure that you are on the, you know, cutting edge of these studies that are being done because it just gives us options. And that's the thing that I think that we really need today is the opportunity to make a calculated and an educated and sort of one of those gut check type of decisions if you're ever being diagnosed with something that you have to fight for your life for and breast cancer can be one of those things for sure so make sure you definitely do deeper research on this we are going to be sending an, an email i'll have kara send out an email to you this week with some of the links where you can go ahead and do some deeper research for yourself again i am not a doctor um, i am just a um, a woman who wants to make sure that i'm always one step ahead of anything that could possibly throw me off track and really put me in that position where i have to make some of those pretty critical decisions and i want to make sure that i come to the table or come to the office or come to an appointment with as much information already on my side and a bunch and as much knowledge and kind of personal experience with what i'm doing in my nutritional world to make sure that i'm armed to make the best decisions for me and my family at any given time and i would really hope that this community here is providing you guys with that same thing we want to make sure that we're in a position if we're ever um given any kind of news that we, was very unexpected like breast cancer always is for us to to not have to go into reactionary mode or panic mode but to go into think mode and preparation mode and research mode and we have the power and we should have the opportunity to do that and weigh all of our options at all times and if we're in a situation where it's worse than we could have ever imagined then yes we also want to make sure that we are very aware of what the medical options are for us and taking the route that will be the one that will potentially save our lives with without causing too many dire side effects that we can't recover from so make sure that you are doing your research like i said i will send an email out i'll have kara do some links for you guys so you can read um, some research that being that's being done and i'll kind of share with you what i saw today so again you can just kind of get those wheels turning and make sure that you are armed and ready in case you're ever delivered any kind of news that was unexpected that would have to make you you know make some life changing and life-saving decisions for yourself and knowing that you have the power to really exercise um, the best route for you and your family. So I thought that research was definitely fascinating. Um, and like I said, with these new documentaries that are coming out, what we know about what sugar does to us, what we know what living a higher fat kind of lifestyle can do for us, what we know about fasting away, a lot of things um, that we really wanna fight in our body and giving our body the opportunity to kind of repair its own DNA. We're in the power seat and we should always make sure that we're prepared to execute that power if need be. So that's fascinating research there. The second thing I saw today, which actually cracked me up, and I'm hoping we can have some conversation about this too. I always talk about nutritional trends and how um, we have to be really careful about, you know, um, these fads that are coming along and is it really something that we want to partake in? And uh, one of the uh, ones that came up that I saw just recently was cockroach milk as a superfood. And yes, I did not stutter. I said cockroach milk as a superfood. 
And I guess this these findings came up actually a couple years ago. It originally started being talked about in 2016, and it's kind of come up again. And there's actually um, a company in South Africa. Got it. I love my South Africans uh, that hang out here with us. They're always on the cutting edge of, of new and upcoming nutritional stuff going on in the world. Um, it's actually a company called Gourmet Grubs, and they sell something called Ento Milk, which is actually... Um, insect milk products and they sell it um, I think their biggest product is an ice cream or something so what they have found in studies is that um, cockroach milk is actually a superfood it's like the it's the perfect food it has um, proteins fats and sugars in it um, so it's it's basically like food how we want it um, and what happens is these cockroaches create these milk crystals and um, they're loaded with amino acids. So they have all the essential amino acids that are found in, in proteins. So it's a complete protein. Um, the problem with cockroach milk is that it's kind of hard to come by. Um, so it's hard to actually harvest enough cockroach milk to probably um, be effective. I don't, I don't know what the dosage would be that you would have to take. Um, and they, um, they were also saying the other thing to be weary of is that they haven't proven that cockroach milk is actually safe for human consumption. However, there are, like I said, companies out there who are producing a like, um, um, a like non-dairy alternative to milk-based products by using um, insect milk in its place. And they're saying it's calcium rich and again, has all the amino acids um, and it's supposed to be the new superfood that's on the rise. So curious to know, would you guys drink super foods like cockroach milk if they were deemed safe for human consumption and were considered the new up and coming amino acid uh, for nutritional benefits and or even physique or fitness benefits. I mean, uh, amino acids are used, you know, in a lot of uh, fitness uh, profession type thing settings where, you know, bodybuilders use amino acids. There's a lot of just, you know, everyday people who are using amino acid supplementation. And if cockroach milk was one that was available, would you try it? I can honestly tell you I would not. It's something that I think that I could not just mentally get past. And there's way too many options out there for me. Um, I think that that would be one of those things that I would say, yes, probably not. It was very interesting to do the research on it and it's fascinating, um, fascinating stuff uh, to know that there's the possibility out there, but for me personally, I would have to say no. So interested to see what you guys have to say. So I'm gonna go over here on YouTube and welcome everyone here and see what kind of comments and questions we have. And again, if you have any information or personal experience with maybe even this test uh, for breast cancer, the um, Onco type score, if you've had that test done, and, um, and you have a personal story that you would like to share with us, I would love to be able to read it and offer any other advice we can to anyone watching. Uh, Linda B, watching from Ontario, welcome. Alini, watching from Seattle. Kenneth, cockroach milk. This reminds me of the Simpsons episode when the mob gave the school children rat milk. Yeah, um, no, I don't, I think I would be milk free for sure at that point. Christine, hello. Uh, Betty Boop, first time able to watch live. I'm in Han in Ontario. Newbie to IF, um, learning from your videos. Thank you for what you do. I would not drink cockroach anything. Yeah, me neither. Linda B, uh, I not ever, I hate cockroaches. Exactly. Melissa, watching from Dublin, Ireland. Well, Melissa, welcome from Dublin. Uh, my grandmother would be proud to know that you're here watching us. She is a Irish lady herself. Okay, let me come on over here to Facebook and see what we got going on over here. Um, let's see. Jess, hello. Debbie, good to have you here. And hello, Jennifer, hello. Jenny, um, Passion Planner, January grad, hugs to all from Michigan. Sandy, May Course grad, F3 participant, awesome. Diane, Diane of D I A N N E from Pennsylvania, good to have you here. Janet, all my F3 class women are here. Thanks for jumping on. Hi, Amy. Dawn, Janet, cockroach milk, no, I do not care how fabulous it is. I actually gag just thinking of it, I know. But here's what I want to think about for just a second. 
The fact that it's a cockroach makes us go, no way. But think about all the other fads that we've jumped on without even thinking about, you know, that's just a little less repulsive than a cockroach and how quick we are to kind of just jump into something that's a fad or something that everybody else is jumping on. And that's why I thought it would be fascinating to talk about today too, because, because because it's a cockroach, we're like, no way. But what if it was something else? Would we be quick to jump to that nutritional fad without doing any research and really finding out what the depths of that new fad would be? And I know I've fallen victim to that myself a few times, and it's what I've dubbed as supplementation desperation, and we just kind of don't want that quick fix. So what if cockroach milk was found to, I don't know, help you lose fat faster or really help you enhance a workout or help you build lean muscle without having to work out so hard. If it promised those things, would you get over the fact that it's cockroach milk? Um, if it kind of was dubbed the magic pill maybe or the secret sauce to fat loss or weight loss or muscle gain and if it promised those things and there were those results that were being showed would you get over the fact that it's cockroach milk because a lot of times we jump into things that may not be so safe for us but we tend to not think about the maybe potential side effects or hazards of things because we're hopeful that it will produce the results that are being advertised. And that's what I really thought was fascinating about the cockroach milk thing was we're grossed out about it because it's a cockroach, but what if it promised to do amazing things? Would you not be so grossed out and would you take your chances? I would still have to say no. I would probably just work out smart and eat well um, because I don't think I would ever succumb to drinking cockroach milk for a magic fix, I think I would probably just work out smarter. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what happens if they find that it's some fascinating quick fix to fitness or something. Um, Jillian, uh, ew, gross cockroach milk, yeah, I know. Um, it needs a new name. Yeah, I think that's why they're putting it in ice cream, maybe, um, as um, a dessert type of thing or, or making it more of a treat and kind of hiding it. Um, maybe that's what that, that grubs company is doing in South Africa. Becky gagging over here, looking great today. Please send me your research links. Yeah, and we'll put you on the email list for sure. Jillian, I would not drink it ever. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Um, hard pass, uh, pass on the coconut milk. Yeah, exactly. Janet, I would be back. I'd have to go throw up. Oh no, don't do that. It's, it's, we don't have to drink it and we don't even have to think about it. Uh, Sandy sounds disgusting. I agree. Debbie, I'm going to pass on that one. Um, Jillian, you can also get co uh, cricket flour. I would not consume that either. Yeah, me neither. Joy, no, just no to the cockroach milk. Exactly. Absolutely not. So you guys are all in my camp. Definitely would not do the cockroach milk. Mm -mm -mm. I don't think I could handle it. Yeah, me neither. As long as no wings or legs fall in. Yeah. Kara, Kara added that as me. So yes, thanks for thinking for me. I, I agree exactly. Um, red food coloring comes from the uh, cochil insects. Ew, really? Maybe I won't be doing red food coloring either. Um, the last comment is from Michael. Oh yeah, the legs and the um, wings. Michael said, yeah, no way, no way for sure. And you know that I mean, cockroaches in some places are considered a delicacy, right? I mean, there's chocolate covered cockroaches and fried cockroaches and all that kind of stuff. And but I think that the the thought of a lactating cockroach is just the part that is so disgusting. Um, and not that I would even even eat a chocolate covered cockroach, but uh, I think the I I think that just the the milk part of it is what is the grossest. I don't know. At least that's for me. Anyways, uh, let's see. Melissa, got you. Um, hi to your grandmother. Oh, thank you so much. My grandmother passed away a few years ago, but I'm sure she's, she, I feel like she's always with me, so I'm sure she sees that you're here too. Renee from Michigan, April course grad and feeling IF awesome. Awesome. Melissa, cockroach milk would be very hard to sell for people unless it's promise, promise eternal youth. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. They're going to probably find some way to put some sort of promise on it that would get people to buy it. But again, it seems like how would you, so what would happen because they would have to produce it in mass quantities, right? So if it's promised to be a fountain of youth or a quick fix to something, then everyone would want it. And then you're going to have the same situation that we have with the, with the, um, with the cattle industry and the chicken industry and the milk industry and all the other industries is that they're going to have to have these probably, um, 
hormone injected cockroaches or they're gonna have to do something so these cockroaches keep lactating so that we can get the milk from it and then now we have this processed and totally tainted milk product that would probably end up not doing everything that we wanted it to do because it's now it's not natural because we have to mass produce it so anything that has to be mass produced to feed the craze would be something that then I would question the production process of it more than I would the grossness of the fact that it's actually cockroach milk. So there's that in the industry of mass producing food and supplements for people, right? So uh, the cockroach part was the funny part and I'm glad that you guys are with me on not drinking cockroach milk and to think about a little bit before you jump into desperation with your supplementation what are some of the side effects and have you thoroughly researched what it is that you are putting in your body and sometimes supplementation is totally appropriate if it's going to get you to the end goal and fit with the lifestyle that you're looking for and there's no danger to what you're doing to yourself and then other times if it's too good to be true it's probably too good to be true and you can often just be sinking your money into a bunch of elixirs that aren't going to do you any good so always do your research and then always know what the source of what you're consuming is coming from. And then on the breast cancer side of things, that's the more serious side of things. And I really do empower you guys to do research and always make sure that you are game ready. Make sure that you have um, plenty of research in all avenues of nutrition. Make sure you have plenty of research in all avenues of what fasting can do for you, what uh, keto like living can do for you make sure you're staying on top of some of these documentaries that are being published make sure you're staying on top of some of these medical uh, research findings that are being done and what I loved about Good Morning America's coverage of this story this morning is that they said that one of the studies uh, was funded by the people who I think make this test and they were saying that this test is about three thousand dollars to have done but I think if it's gonna put you in a category where you might be considered um, almost ineligible for, for chemotherapy with breast cancer, it would be definitely worth the expense. Um, and I think they, they also said that most insurance companies do cover it. Um, um, we want to know what our options are beforehand. Like I said, we don't ever want to be handed some information at a doctor's office and feel like we have to go in panic mode without having something in our hip pocket. So ladies, always make sure you're on the on top of this new research that's being done. Make sure you're reading enough versions of research studies so that you're getting all sides of things. Because remember, we don't want to be tainted by a research study that's being funded by someone who's trying to promote something, i.e. the wine industry saying that a glass of wine tonight is heart healthy. We've talked about that here before as well. Um, so make sure that you're, you're actually reading the bottom line of things. Make sure you're knowing who's doing these research studies. Um, I think something you know that's going to be posted on the New England Journal of Medicine site is probably something that's going to be a non-biased type of research finding. And then I always suggest going to the second and third and fourth layer of information as well so that you get a conclusive amount of information with options. So when you go into a doctor's appointment, you know what you're talking about and you're speaking the same language that your doctor is speaking and you can say, I would rather research this or look into this and give yourself some options. So um, I hope that helps um, someone who, who might not know what to do if they diagnose, if they're recently being diagnosed with breast cancer or gives you some um, 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 insight or even some enthusiasm or hope that you can have a plan for yourself if you happen to be diagnosed yourself. So always wanting to share what I know here with you guys and hope that you will at least go on and do a little bit of research for yourselves. Welcome to all of our F3 students. We started this weekend. I'm super excited for you. Um, we have some great stuff coming your way and I'm gonna be going live in your group right around four o'clock this afternoon, so in about a half an hour. Uh, for those of you who are interested in joining our intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course, we have one starting on February 9th. We have a great summer special going on right now, so please make sure that you visit our website for today's Aging, or yeah, for today's Aging Woman, um, all the information is there for you. We would love to have you come on board with us starting June 9th. Um, it's a great way to really get some base information and create a lifestyle for yourself that does coincide with things like 
being game ready in case you are uh, diagnosed with something that might put you on a different path of life than you were expecting to be on, being empowered with information and then taking that information a step further and actually putting some experience with it as far as nutrition and creating a lifestyle for you that will really put you in a place where you can look and feel your best and live your most authentic life is the only real defense we have. Um, and once we get that defense set up for ourselves, we become empowered. And once we're empowered, then we can have conversations that might be a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit scary because we're in the driver's seat. And we always want to make sure when it comes to our health and well-being that we stay in that driver's seat. So our intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course enrollment is open and it will be open through next weekend because our course starts on the 9th. Um, let me see if there's any more comments real quick before I jump off. Uh, Joy, it would be next to impossible for me to choose chemo. I have so much confidence in Franken science oil and other alternative choices along with diet and addressing cancer cure. Yeah, I agree. But then there's those times when I, I think, um, I know I, I feel like I would, I would not want to go chemo route either. But then I think about the fact that I still have really young kids and trust me, if I ever get diagnosed with anything and it seems like that's the only option, I'm going to do that with other things because I feel like I have to save my life for my kids. But I also don't want to be wrecked when I get done. And I've seen so many of my girlfriends uh, go through uh, traditional cancer treatments and end up with two or three other life-threatening things post-treatment. And so that is always on the back of my mind too that I always want and want to make sure. And Joy, you made a great point. There's a lot of things that we can experiment with now. And I'm um, definitely in the experimental type of seat and would do everything I can um, to save my life. And it would start with me making decisions for myself for sure. So I hope that you guys will do some research and, and have that um, really, really um, comfortable sense of what you can do for yourself in the case of becoming diagnosed with something that you weren't expecting. And it goes with all other types of cancers as well. Um, but this one just happened to be breast cancer. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I also want to give a huge shout out to all my amazing people here in this community for understanding that always in our house family comes first. And we took a lot of time this weekend to spend with our family. We had guests in town. My in-laws were here. We had two goddaughters fly in to spend the weekend with us as we celebrated Logan's high school graduation. And it was really nice to just sort of unplug and really embrace our loved ones and had a really great weekend this weekend. So thank you so much for understanding when I pull back and put my family first. And I want to know that I appreciate you guys so much. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to uh, allow us to have that time as a family. Um, and I don't always feel like I have to post everything that goes on and our personal life um, for you guys to understand um, what we have going on in our family. So I appreciate you guys for understanding that and then coming back as well. We're going to Mexico on Friday to celebrate Logan's 18th birthday. We'll be there for a whole week and I will be sharing that with you guys as I always promise I will to show you how to live an intermittent fasting and keto-like lifestyle even when you're on vacation. So I'm bringing you guys to Mexico. You get to go on vacation with us next week and that will be a really fun for my family and really fun hopefully for you guys as well to, to come along with us. So stay tuned for all of that information next week as well. Have a super fantastic rest of your Monday and I will see you live here on Wednesday. 3 p.m. Central Standard Time where we will talk about something else hopefully relevant to intermittent fasting and the keto-like lifestyle for us aging women. And I hope that the decisions that you make for yourself today will really put you in a place where you can look and feel your best and live your most authentic life. Have a great day.